You got fifteen seconds. Yes. You gotta tell us what is the fifty percent podcast. You gotta you gotta pitch it to me. Go. Okay, so it's just two people who've been watching Doctor Who their whole lives. We know a lot about it than normal people, no offense that we do. If we do percent Doctor Who podcast, we just drift off a lot and we chat shit about every single episode of Doctor Who from the reboot, from series one all the way up to series twelve. We're gonna be here for years, baby. It's gonna be lit. And we get distracted a lot. Yeah. That's why it's called the fifty percent Doctor Who podcast, if you didn't catch that. Yeah, we're gonna Boy, we're, gonna have a good laugh we're back. It. It's gonna be great. Yeah, we, we did like a pilot season. Uh, like two years ago when season 11 came out. That's a good way to it put it. It was a while ago. It was ago, a while ago, it? yeah. It didn't really, you know, we were just kind of doing it. It was fun, but... um, It did all right some weeks. Sometimes it would just do good and then other weeks it would just do atrocious. Yeah. And, which is a really weird thing. But we're here now. We're, we're committed. But, I've I've taken this overly seriously. Like, I'm ready. I'm I'm ready for yeah. this video. Yeah, I only watched last night. You're pretty far ahead, aren't you? Um, I've watched... Yeah, look, I'm, I'm trying to tone back. I've just gotten overexcited because... Basically, what's brought this on is I've, I've bought all the, the Blu-rays for season one to seven, which I used to only have on DVD. Mm-hmm. So I've been like holding off watching any of those episodes for the past like uh, like six months yeah. or so, honestly. Um, Long time, just yeah. Just because I've been gearing up to do a full rewatch. And then I spoke to Colin and we were like, yeah, let's watch it together. Um, so, it's a pretty cool thing to do. Yeah. So I've been a bit overexcited finally getting these Blu-rays. And I am three episodes in now. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold back. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold back and try, try stand my ground, and not get too carried away. Right. So you just watched Unquiet Dead. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. See. So okay. Cool. All right. Yeah. I only, I only watched Rose. I only watched it yesterday. But it was actually really cool to revisit it. Like, it, I'm actually really excited. We're gonna be here for a long time. Yeah. Sure. We've got so, so much. To, but it'll be fun. It'll be fun. I reckon. I reckon it'll be really fun. Yeah, yeah. So in case you didn't get from, um, from Connor's pitch there. So basically, what yes. we're doing from start to finish. Well, you know, till present. We're going to go through every single episode of Doctor Who from the 2005 reboot. A lot of fun. I, I don't think I've watched the most of these episodes since 2015. Um, really? Yeah. Especially uh, RTD era. I think I... My favorite era. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm a Moffat man, but oh, I, <laughs> I, I, I think in 2015, day. I started rewatching the show and I got up to like halfway through season six and I just stopped. So... Yeah, because you, you did a really cool thing that I found interesting because you said I always want to watch an episode but i don't know what i watch so i just started from series one and then every time i want to watch an episode i'll just go back to where i stopped yeah and you did get to like series six yeah or so. and then i just kind of uh, stopped so that's a pretty cool whatever. idea yeah but now i'm committed we'll get, connor and we'll I, get there as well we're, we're committed together yeah. to doing this so yeah my buddy here on the other side that's connor haddam he's great he's got the Hello youtube there. channel connor haddam he's got the podcast for a laugh he's the mm-hmm. man um, and I'm Thank you. Aiden Green. Also got a YouTube channel so you, called Aiden. Greeny Productions. Sometimes I discuss Doctor Who content on there. Sometimes I just talk about other things. Um, and together we are here combined for the very first proper episode of the 50% Doctor Yay. Who podcast. Oh. Wowie. Let's get it. Let's let's get into it, right? So Rose, right, came out in, what, 2005? 26th of March, 2005, actually. Yeah, it was 2005, which is bananas Crazy. we both watched it live didn't yeah, we? yeah yeah like we obviously didn't know each other at the time but no we would have been like we did watch seven it live. or something like that yes yeah, something about like seven six maybe yeah, yeah so what's your Ridiculous memory how what's your memory was. of like sitting down and watching it um i didn't want to watch it and my parents said both my very similar to you because like both my parents were like you should watch this we used to watch it as kids i reckon you'd really like it and i was just i was instantly hooked i really just instantly liked it i, I just I found Eccleston's, Eccleston's Doctor just so charismatic. I, even last night watching it, I just, I just remember having fond memories just sitting down all those years ago and just being like, this is really cool. And I was just, I was instantly hurt, which I think shows what a great pilot is. Cause like, I just, I was really into it. I was like, and everything, it had like humor, it was action. I was scared watching it. Like, and just Rose as well. Like, I, I, now, now Rose is not great, but like back in the day, Rose was like my favorite companion. And like, even when she left, I was like, she's the best. Uh, you know, and it's a classic villain too, which which I didn't know obviously back in the day, yeah. but now obviously it is. Yeah, m- so my memory is like pretty similar to yours. Like, yeah, the folks sort of sent me down being like, this this was all the crazy stuff back in the day. Mm. This, this was the greatest thing mm. ever. Sat me down, watched it. But the thing is, I don't remember anything watching the episode. I remember where I was sitting and I remember watching, they did like a, a 10 second countdown to the start of the episode. Yes. Yeah, That's all did. I remember. Did, yeah. I remember the countdown and then my mind is just erased erase the memory of me watching it for the first time it was a huge moment and a lot of people 
when it was getting made, like, even the BBC didn't think it was going to work, but then, like, it got huge when it was about to come out, and then, like, yeah. it did really well. I'll tell you what. Again, I do you, yeah, go ahead, sorry. Oh, well, I was just going to say, I, I've been tackling a few of the special features on the Blu-ray. Um, okay, And yeah. I watched an interview with, with Chris Eccleston, and I, I'll come back to this at, at the end of the episode, but... Um, interesting, because that was all interesting stuff, It's it? really interesting hearing his sort of first public interview uh, about who, or his first like yeah. proper one promoting the show. It was like, I think the show was coming out a few days after this interview, Ed. So I'll, I'll touch on that later, but it was really interesting. Really interesting. It is all that stuff. I, again, watching it yesterday was just like, it really upsets me hearing the one season. Mm. It really does. I mean, it's like, a great season. I, I loved him, you know. Oh God, yeah. yeah. It's probably, it probably is my, up there, my favorite. Like definitely top three. Yeah. It's Maybe just a shame how he, how he felt about it all and oh. All, all the drama behind the scenes yeah, is like yeah, big, all big the shame. behind the scenes stuff. Because it, he definitely looks like he wants to be there. He's clearly very charismatic. Like he, he went to like him and Russell made a show before, I believe, and I think he even went up to Russell and was like, "I'd really be interested in doing this." Okay. And then like, obviously something happened, but it's all a bit. No, there's never really been a true explanation to what happened, but which is cool of, of him because he's been respectful. He's like, "I don't really want to talk about it," but. Apparently they blacklisted him, but that's the thing. But either way, like, you know, I think it's really sad that he didn't do another season, but you're right, this season is lit. And I really do like this episode. I think it's a great pilot. Yeah. So, like, I remember back in the day, well, you know, I watched it and obviously loved it as a kid. And I think when I grew up a bit and got in my teenage years, I was like, oh, it's so shit. It's a shit pilot. What? All John's a shit. And I, I was like, mm. you know, I was like, if this was an American show and this was actually a pilot, because obviously... The whole series was commissioned. This wasn't commissioned as just a pilot. Like yeah. Brit- British shows, they yeah. usually commission a full season. It's, it's rare That's they do right. a pilot. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And I remember being like, oh, if this was an actual pilot, there's no way that this would have been picked up or, or whatever. But now, like, rewatching it, I loved it, man. I, I was yeah. hooked from start to finish. It was crazy. Yeah, it is like, I, I know I had that kind of same thought where I was like, you know, I love this. I was laughing, but I was like, you know, if I. If I did try and watch this without watching the show, I will try to watch it now or even a few years ago, I would have thought it would probably the biggest of shit <laughs> because I like grew up with it. It's so funny. It's yeah. so dumb. Just it, like Plastic Mickey and like Jackie and stuff. It's so, so funny. I think it's what, just what like, it does as it's well. It's not that good, but... It sets the tone for the RTD era so perfectly. Yes, yes. Like the, the humor, the soap wrong, yeah. opera drama elements... Um, it, it's so cool, and so many of those elements that it set up are still present in in New Who today. So not mm-hmm. only did it set up the RTD era, but also like just the the current era of the show. You know, it's bloody crazy. Clive too. R.I.P. Oh man, I I loved those scenes with the, especially when I was a kid. I was like, whoa! Like it was a really good way to explain to a kid that like the Doctor's really old. And like, kind of like explained it and stuff. And there's a, that brief mention uh, of Gallifrey and the war and stuff, and how he couldn't save the Orton's planet and stuff. There's that little, there's that yeah. little thing with like, I, uh, with which is really cool. I love how in this episode, it's all that time war stuff is only like hinted at. Like, I, I can't mm-hmm. even remember the days when the time war wasn't a thing because mm-hmm. you know both of us grew up in the RTD era. I, I think when I was watching RTD as a kid, I thought that the time war was happening throughout all of Classic Who. And then I see. when they brought it back, they were like, okay, the time was now done. But little did I know that it was, yeah. you know, slot right in the middle there. Which I you think like... that's crazy from Russell. That's such a cool thing to have thought of and thrown in there. Oh, and God, yeah. Especially now that I'm a few episodes in, seeing how it gets teased throughout the next episodes and they build on it, it slightly does. more and more each week. It's it's awesome. And it, and it doesn't it doesn't really get like I don't miss the Bowie, but like it doesn't really get resolved into the fiftieth and like even even little things that like because again we were kids when we first watched it and I remember it was like the fiftieth was coming up and you said to me, Do you remember in the scene in uh in Doomsday where um the doctor mentions Arcadia and I was like, No and like there's even little stuff like that where like as a kid like they would mention stuff with the time war and I didn't think much of it. And it wasn't really until like you know Day of the Doctor was coming out, I was like, shit, yeah, it really was mentioned here and there. It's like, it's a really cool, it's a really cool thing. And I, I do, and again, I do really love all, I know Clive's a meme, like, I'm fully aware, but like, I do really love the whole thing of like, it, I could see that happening with someone who would like, 
see yeah. the doctor and they're the same person in, in like all the Kennedy photos and the Titanic. By the way, why is it not like Chris Rickerson? Is that just really bad Photoshop? Okay. Did you notice that? Uh, yeah, I think, you know how they did those live tweets? The, the live uh, tweet yes, along? Yes, yes, I yes, think, yes, yes. You know, I wasn't watching it live because we live in Australia and the, the time zones are... Yeah, yeah, 3 a.m. ish, yeah. But um, I was just reading up on them, and one of them was like, oh, I did this Photoshop, is what RTD said. So I'd assume that maybe that was about that that photo. Um, but the the Titanic one doesn't look anything like him. No. Yeah. and But it, what else doesn't make sense to me, is that, like, you know, when he's in Rose's apartment, he... Yeah, the, the looks, ears. Looks like he's re- yeah, looks, and I'm like, so wait, did you just regenerate? But then you got all this... You've been on the Titanic, you've been at Kennedy's assassination, like, that... Didn't really make sense to me because like crazy, because like he looks at himself in the mirror and he's like, oh, I could be. Well, I don't know, I don't know, but little, yeah, little I think things I like that just like throw you off. But that something has been said that he had like a mind wipe or something. I can't remember. I, I briefly read it like a, a few weeks ago somewhere. I don't know. I don't know. It's probably some BS excuse just to cover up a bit of yeah. a continuity issue. But I think I think that like I think it was supposed to be like at the end of the day of the Doctor when John Hurt regenerates. I think. It's supposed to be alluded that from there it goes to Rose, but I don't see it yeah, like that, you know. Then it, it doesn't make sense. We need more big finish. We I think we need the Clive big finish, Clive, big finish you know? audio dramas. That's that's what we need. The, uh, well, I would love man. that. They just my, they kill off my man too soon. Like you know, <laughs> it's, that like the Autons look good. Like they expect not so much when they're running. When they're running, you can clearly see it's a rubber suit. Yeah. Especially in like the scene in the uh, in like the upstairs of the shop when they're running, you can so tell it's like a rubber suit. Yeah. But apart from that, I rec- like the Autons used to scare the fuck out of me as a kid. I-, I think like they made a good move of sort of, you know, bring the show back with a familiar villain who's not too familiar. You know, he's not the Daleks, the Cybermen, the Centaurans, mm. the Time Lords. It was mm. the Autons. It's like they've had a-, a handful of episodes in the past. Have you seen the previous episodes? I actually haven't. No, none of them have come up on my. Because A- Aiden's boxes. more of a classic who watched it than I am. I'll admit it. Yeah, well, just like you know, I was always. I think as a kid, I was like, "Oh, I'll get one DVD for each Doctor," which I did, and I didn't actually watch all of them. Um, but I, right. I'd seen a handful of episodes. I'd actually seen a whole season of Baker's, um, Tom Baker's. Um, but obviously now the, these big Blu-ray collection sets, which are beautiful, except when you live in Australia and they keep changing the packaging and it doesn't line up properly on your shelves. That's a different story. Um, but yeah, so obviously I'm diving into those and I've watched like six seasons, I think now of classic who, and I'm, I'm actually really enjoying it. This is the old season. Like Tom Baker's last season sucked ass. In my opinion, that was like, it was so long. And so almost every story was such a drag, but, um, we got there. Yeah. I think, um, I think Autons were Pertwee's. Yeah, they were yeah. the Pertwee thing, yeah. Uh, I think, his I think first it was story. his first episode. Yeah, Spear yeah. from Space. Also, the first episode, to, the first serial to be released on Blu-ray. I think maybe it was like a test. And you haven't seen it? No, because um, it was just like a, a singular for that one story. They released right. it on a Blu-ray like ages ago. I think it was around the 50th. Um, oh, yeah, they did, didn't they? Yeah. Do you remember we used to go oh, into yeah. JB Hi-Fi and it would just be the yes. only one there and we'd make fun of the it? The only classic Blu-ray. <laughs> Yes, I do remember that. Oh, Wait, so they they did they did Pertwee's. I don't really. You're more into these than I am. But they did Pertwee's. That you got Pertwee's little uh, collection box thing, and they had not have his first episodes on it. No, because the collections are per season, so they they're not they're not doing like the first Doctor's season by season. They're literally just picking the episodes at random. So oh, like sorry, the, best, the seasons the best by, of the best, you know. No, 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 so they're doing it like they're just picking like a random season and they'll remaster all of season twelve, which was the first one they did, which oh. is Baker's first season. And then they did um Davison's first season. And I was like, okay, maybe they're doing it, you know, the first season of each doctor I'll go through. But then next thing they do Baker's last season, and I was like, Alright, I guess they're just doing whatever ones they want to do and next thing, you know, right. John Pertwee's second last season's out. Which is a great season, actually. I really enjoyed that. Um, and yeah, so they just they just pick the seasons out at random, and eventually they'll have a complete collection up. But they do look good right. on the shelf, even with the slightly different packaging that you get in Australia. Legit. Uh, how, how did yeah. the um? Because I should have actually, I should have done this. I have the series one Blu-ray, but I did watch it on stand, which is you can only watch it in SD. But you watched it in glorious 1080 how was that was it, it looks look good? good like obviously it, it wasn't shot in 1080 so there's some shots that are just yes. a bit like you know pretty similar to how they were on the dvd <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong but there's um you know there's like a few issues here and there like 
Um, I don't think the sound mix is perfect. It's sometimes the score is like a bit too loud and I'm like, oh my God, like I'm upstairs watching like this, this scene and the next thing I know, my sister's hearing like Rose's theme blasting um, through the through the room Super next door. For... Yeah. Yeah, legit though. Yeah, it the about the score though. Yeah, the score is. So yeah, it is, yeah, it is. I love Mo- the score. Yeah, Murray's score is it's brilliant. It's it's so good. It it really is, and I I, I love Murray yeah. so much. It's so iconic. The start. I think it's perfect. Bro, just just they love they love a good Earth shot zooming in. Yeah, that's so RTD as well, isn't it? That you know, to England, like yeah, the classic. Yeah, it's like it. It's great. Yeah, it, I've got to laugh. So, um, for those who don't know, on um, I I'm a film student, right? And at my uni, they they have a thing. Some of the teachers have this thing called, um, like film student bingo or something, or like, um, student filmmaker bingo. And when we have like a big showcase night, they have like numerous things that they that come up pretty often in um, in like student films. And one of the big things on there is the movie starting with an alarm clock going off. And the fact That's that true. this starts pretty much with, with that, yep. I think, was hilarious. It's always like, it's an alarm clock. It's someone waking up in bed. Yeah. This is what happens. That happens a lot. Yeah, That's, it happens yeah, in those, as well. Those are the cliches. Like, yeah, yep. yeah. It's the cliche of the... They always say that. Ron and Warren writing a script. Never start with someone yeah. waking up. Because it's the most cliche it, thing so you can dumb, do. But it's funny. It, it, it's so RTD. Though. You're not wrong, like, cause, yeah. RT, it it's a great era, but it is like pretty pretty cliche. There's a lot of cliches in there, you know. Yeah, well, he starts series two off with the same. If you count Christmas Invasion as the start of series two, he does the same mm. Earth shot and yeah. then goes down to the flat at the Christmas tree. So it does a similar thing. Yeah, yeah. Who directed this? Do you know who directed this? Um, one? This was directed by Keith Bulk, who I don't I don't think he's directed any more episodes of Who. I don't think it's right, an odd I was one because there's a lot of like recurring directors in the show um yeah i wouldn't mind keeping an eye out for some recurring directors i haven't really done that well post the, moffat's era the two big ones in the rtd era are euros lynn who i know from yeah. rewatching has done episode two and three um and right. graham harper also does quite a quite a few of the big ones especially in the david tennant late david tennant era Okay, no. Um, yes, so yes, this, he did it at the time and stuff. Keith Brook has done three episodes of Who. What other ones has he done? Um, I'm trying to find. <laughs> here we go. There's going to be some fat memes in here. Yeah. So it's not Series 1, obviously. He must have come back for Series 2. Maybe. I don't know. Must I, have. I'm trying to find, but... It doesn't it interest me. what episodes on here. It's in the BBC where just like... This guy's done a few first episodes for us. He you knows what he's doing. Yeah, well, maybe we'll you didn't want to do it. Yeah. You never know. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. I mean, it, again, like, they didn't think it was going to be as big as it got. I mean, especially around series... I remember with series two, especially when David came in, if you walked into, like, Toys R Us, like... Oh, crazy. It was just... It was just massive. Like, mm. you know, the show got so huge. And I just don't think they would have... I wouldn't have shot anyone on it too impressive, I think. I think it was just like nobody's, to be honest. Because, like, you know, again, they didn't really think it was going to work. And it just... It, and it, I re- it ends really well as well. Like, you know, I love, I love how... I, love, I do love how Rose doesn't want to go. And the only reason she's like, oh, actually, nah, fuck it, is when he says it travels in time. Yeah. Which is a classic scene. But, like, you know, she's like, fam, I'm out. Like, also, you can tell that Mickey, like... He changes the character so much through the show. Because, like, in this episode, he's just like... Yeah, it's just the it's pansy. Well, this this, <laughs> like... this episode had great development for Rose. I thought she's. Um, mm. I, I think mm. episode two does it a bit uh, has better development. But the first one, you know, you can tell she goes from, you know, she's she's meant to be nineteen, even though she looks like mid twenties. But <sighs> she's like straight out of school. Ridiculous. Um, bit of like a, a dropout in a way. Um, but and and you know she just wants to live a life, eat chips with Mickey or whatever. And then, like, she just takes that bed. risk at the end of the episode. And just, I think that that's, like, a cool first step of development for Rose there. Um, also, okay, yeah. I've, got, I've got Keith Boke on here. Um, so, he... Oh, okay. Yeah, so he did yeah. Rose, and he did Aliens of London and World War Three. So, he's only an Eccleston boy. But so great episodes. So, he did in Series 1 as well. Yeah. I do love those episodes. Those are some great two-parters. Yeah. Especially after like, because like 
to me, End in the World, Unquiet Dead, they're not great, in my opinion. We'll get there, obviously. But, like, when it was those, I was like, ah. And then I watched, um, obviously, Aliens of London and World War Three, and I was like, brah. And I think from there on onwards, it's really good. But nah, that's interesting. I never, really, again, I never really, um, I never really caught Eye of Directors until, like, Rachel Schlale came in. I feel like that was the first time a director really got noticed for their work. So yeah, I was like, this is lit. I remember our old mate Trevor was always saying, like, Graham Harper episodes are the best episodes. Oh, I was so upset when he didn't do End of that... Time. I thought he would do it. Um, oh, he didn't do End of Time. No, I, I thought think... he did. No, I think it's like a random person. He did uh, Waters of Mars, though. So. Did she probably a second for an episode? Yeah, yeah. That's... So he didn't do End of Time? No, he didn't. I can't I remember. I really he thought he time. did. Yeah. God's so, sake. Connor, give us, a, give us a bit of a review of the episode. Of, of Rose. Um, yeah, again, I, I'd say, look, it's it's not perfect. And again, if I if I sat down with you today and I just watched it for the first time yesterday, yeah, look, you know, I, I wouldn't have loved it. I'm going to be honest with you, I wouldn't have loved it. But, like, you know, I grew up, I grew up watching this. And, like, to me, it's so, so nostalgic. I even got the OG DVDs in my room, like, from, like, series one onwards, like, I used to collect them each week in volumes. Like, the show meant so much to me. And I think, especially because I didn't, I didn't even want to watch it when I was a kid, to grasp my attention that quickly, show some great writing. And look, I'm in it. I do I do have a really big soft spot for Russell's era. <laughs> As you know, I really do love it. Yeah. I really do love it. A lot of people it. do. And a I feel lot like, of people do. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, I'm a very nostalgic person. I feel like, you know, I grew up with it and it's like, this was just, it's just the start of the era. It's, it's so, you're right. You know, it does set up everything that Russell does. And he, for like, for his run on the show, he builds up great characters and he did two spinoffs, which all come into Doctor Who Mm. at the end of his run. And I think, I think you got to give him props for that. And I think his era is the best in my opinion. This is just the start of it. And, you know, Again, it's it's far from great, but yeah. I, I if I if I um if I get like a if I like ever show my partner in the future, it, I feel like they just wouldn't like it. That's the mm. best way I could probably describe it. But I definitely think for me, it's just like that. I, I think Russell's era is the most consistent. Like whilst I prefer Moffat, and I, I just yeah. find his stories a bit more original. I think because there are always like some fun twists. Arguably, sometimes there's too much of a twist in an episode. But um, yes. I think Russell's is so consistent. Like, he knew exactly what this show wanted to be from this first episode. Oh, God, yeah. And look, I'm not, I'm not trying to diss Moffat because, like, my favourite era episode, or should I say episode of Doctor Who, is in this season and it's written by Moffat. So I will give him his juice. Okay, yeah, like, yeah. Moffat is so good. But uh, we'll get there one day when we get to that episode. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's like that's me. Years. Are we? Are we... Yeah, no, we'll get there next year. Obviously, <laughs> are we are we doing ratings or are we are we not doing that? We'll have we'll do ratings at the end out of ten. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Ted, Jesus! <laughs> all right, all right, God. What about you, then? What about you? Yeah, sorry. Just just to segue back onto the the end of time. Oh yeah, go on. Talking about. Oh yeah. Um, so <laughs> sorry, I'm here. Like, it's called fifty percent. It's why it's called fifty percent, Aiden. We got this. I'm my own my researcher here as well. I'm I'm doing all this research. I've got tabs we'll open. We'll have someone in the background soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll have we'll a, an them. editor or a sound mixer. Yeah. It'll be great. Um, so Euros Lynn, the person who I said directs the next two episodes. Um, yes. Is um, directs the end of time. So uh, it looks like the specials they they split it up between like Graham Harper and Euros Lynn, who are the the two. Main oh, director of the era, so yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah, cool. So my thoughts, my thoughts on yeah, come. Uh, Rose. Uh, I got here, yeah, Chris, Billy, Noel, Camille, Camille, I, I don't know how to say her name, um, Jackie. Um, they're all so on point in this episode. They're like... Love Jackie. They're, oh, they're so, so great. So funny. Um, they're so much fun to watch. There's so much chemistry on screen, um, which is, is fantastic. Um I just watched the last season of Classic Who, season 26 with Sylvester. Um, mm-hmm. And I was just, it just, rewatching this episode, it just made me realize how different the errors are and how much um, change that RTD put into it, how much risks he took um, by changing the show so much, even down to the, the change of score from the very like late 80s mm-hmm. synth score to like this orchestral you know murray's like the john williams of doctor who like he's oh 100 he's, he's brilliant OG. love him yeah 
Um, I thought the uh, the one shot sequence. Uh, I don't know if you you picked up on this take where they they step out of the the apartment and they walk through the car park through the garage area and stuff and it's of all course. it's all yeah, in true. one shot and even though it's just like you know it's a simple they're just backing up with the camera but it's awesome like I just think it was really great because because the cinematography there is so simple it allows you to focus so strongly on the performances of Chris and Billy mm-hmm. and their chemistry and yep. the writing between them. And it's great. And then right after that, we have the whole the, Chris's speech of like the world turning and stuff, which was an awesome, awesome speech. It was fantastic. It was great, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Plastic Mickey is the highlight, obviously. Oh, dude, don't get me started. You know what I was thinking? And this is really dumb that I was thinking of this, right? <laughs> so all of the... Oh, no, what was my thought? Oh, I've lost it. It was something about the bins and it was a dumb continuity. Oh, yeah. So if all okay. the bins on the street are out, why are they? Yeah. Why was it empty? The bin that he looks in. Is this is so dumb? But <laughs> I don't know why I thought of this. But if that's such a good point. Why? Why are all the bins empty? Because they're all they're all closed. All the bins are closed. So you'd assume you know when the bin man comes, they usually left open. Um, that's a good point. But Mickey's empty. Just just a thought. It's just, just it's also thought. like that doesn't make any sense. How come the the it's an auton apparently. Yeah, it's such yeah. A, that is weird, isn't it? It doesn't make any sense. How is it there? How did it know McKee was going to be there? How did it know Rose was going to be there? Is that guy in on it? He puts it out. Yeah, yeah. It looks so yeah, that's bad as well. well. That, that's it. You like see him put it straight out. Things. <laughs> you see him put the bin out. So it must be a full yeah. bin if it's about to be picked up by the bin man. So Yeah, is he in on it? Is he an awesome? That's it. He's an awesome. Who knows? Yeah, that's all. Just, I love the hand like thing and he like even twists around. Oh it's man, like, that's great. It's just like falling it off. Crazy CGI. It, and how does how does Mickey get from there to under the <laughs> pen? He wheeled the, the Sorry, bloke I, in the house I'll came undeny. out and, and wheeled the bin all the way down to the to the London Eye. Ridic- I can't wait for the big you finish. just let it go. You just let it go, you yeah. know. You just like, you know, we just we just let it go. It's such a good uh, plastic Mickey is Pizza. Pizza. <laughs> so right, good. Babe, ah, sugar, honey, uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so, it's so fucking funny. Mum watched it's half the so episode bad. with me and she, she was laughing at that. It was so good. <laughs> it's funny. He does it twice. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. And the cork scene. Oh, it's dude. It's just funny. Boing. It's just so funny. And the CGI is terrible, but you just got to love it. You got to absolutely love it. It's such a fat babe, but yeah. You yeah. Do. Um, do you have any, any standout moments from the episode, Con? I do love... I, again, I, I've already said this already, but I do love when... Um, I don't know if I should call it an auton. It's more of a big goo blob of plastic. You know? Hmm. I don't know what it is. I don't really care, to be honest. But, like, you know, it's. I do, again, love that scene where, um, you know, you don't really hear it. It's talking in alien language, but it basically says to the Doctor that you didn't save our planet and oh, the, he's like you know i couldn't save any of them you know the nesting consciousness is, is what we're talking the about the nesting consciousness yeah. that is correct God, well I, I hate that i, I should that. remember that should remember that i watched it yesterday <laughs> i do love that scene a lot that's um great. and just like again the, the that's for me for me like you know little stuff like that i just love and i just like you know I, it's it's a really good it's just like a really good scene between you know the doctor and the villain and a, a thing that i've always loved and it's just the doctor to a key, which makes the scene even better. Is that, you know, he doesn't just go in there quickly and throw in the anti plastic. He says to Rose, I haven't come to kill it. I've come to give it a chance. And that's just, that's the doc to a key, especially so close to after the time or like he literally just got out of it. And then like he's still, he's still the doctor, you know. And that's, that's probably my favorite scene. That and, that and the scene where Rose goes into Tars for the first time, that blew my mind. That's as a great, kid. yeah. That that it's whole and the score set, as well. Yeah. The whole set. And we've seen it. We've seen that set. Yeah. Sorry, you're talking about sorry if you're talking about the Tardis the, set. The set with the nesting consciousness in it. Like that. That is I was gonna say that. Yeah. I thought that looked wicked. Like the fire and everything. It, it mm-hmm. didn't look cheap. It looked awesome. With a TARDIS almost like a shrine in the middle. That was that's how they get there just quietly. Uh, Do you yeah, know that? Uh, no, you don't think about I don't it. Know if don't question it. Another Great thing question. that you just had to let slide by, it's like suddenly it's <laughs> under there. I'm like, how did that get there? Yeah. Did the ornaments just carry it through London, <laughs> just like, you know, sneaking it through? Yeah, that's just exactly how it sense. happened. Again, um, just let it slide, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, my standout moments, like I said, mm-hmm. that whole that whole one-shot sequence followed by the speech with Chris was, was dope. Um, yep. The London eye gag, I think, is hilarious. It gets me every time. Mm. 
And I, I love mm. the shot. I think it's shot really well as well with him oh, just that shot's perfectly beautiful. in front That's of it. So and he turns around and he's like... Yeah. What? It's like three times. What? And the classic <gasps> first fantastic. Fantastic. That's yeah. great. <laughs> it's such a good scene. That's a great one. Um, oh, I have one, one weird moment. Is that I felt mm-hmm. like the very... The, the scene with Rose when she first meets the Yortons and they walk out, they're underground in the shop. Um, mm. And she gets like kind of boxed in by the Yortons and they, they get their mm. arms up and they go to like hit her. She, mm-hmm. I feel like it was kind of out of character for her to be so sheepish there. Like, I, I feel like she's. I was like, why don't like, you just run? Like, yeah, one, I definitely think she could have run. And two, I think she could have pushed him away, you know? Like, I. Uh, Maybe she was scared. Maybe that's part of her development. She was scared at the start, and she started off scared of them, but then she she's swinging around with her gymnastics yeah. and, and not. But um, yeah, I, I guess that no does come down to development. But I, I think watching it back for me, I was like, I, I just don't know if even Rose at the start of her time on the show was sort of that sheepish, you know? Mm. I don't know. Yeah, no, just nah, a that's a good point. Just a thought. Could have run away. Definitely could have run away. I literally thought like yesterday. I was like, can I just run? Like, but it, well, it, it she, is followed by the, yeah. the great sequence of, of Chris coming up and run. Run. And then they run. That's yeah. such a good scene. It's good. It it's is a great episode. The There's a lot of great stuff in it. There really is a lot of great stuff in I it. I was really surprised with how much I liked this episode, man. I was really surprised. Good. 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 Because I, I, you know, I've, I've, I haven't, I'm not like you really. I, I love. I love rewatching Russell Zero. I feel like I do that the most. Mm. So I've rewatched it. I probably watched it maybe. I, I definitely would have watched it last year at some point. So it'd been a while since I've seen it, but not that long. So like, I always knew I've loved it. But that's good. I'm I'm glad you I'm glad you really liked it because you know I reckon I reckon now you're gonna really like Russell Zero. Yeah, I, I will because I, uh, I loved it so much as a kid. Will. I just I I think I just fell in love yeah. with uh, Capaldi and and um, oh god yeah you know, yeah. I, so I, I became pretty into Moff's writing a bit more. But um, I think as well, I'm enjoying them because, yeah, like I said, I've got the Blu-rays and I'm watching them on the big the plasma screen upstairs, mm-hmm. setting it. I'm making it dark in the theater room and I'm just, I'm mm-hmm. laser focused. I don't go on my phone or anything. I'm Good, I'm good. I appreciate that. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it big time. Big time. But yeah, um, okay. Well then, Con, would you like to give us a, a rating out of 10? For Rose. Okay. So we're doing 10. Okay. Yeah. 10 docs. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. True. There's not a million. There's she not, was wrong. Not at this point. Not at this point. Um, oh, God. I'd probably give it 8.5, I reckon. I reckon it's really fun. Yeah. I reckon it's just a really fun time. It's not perfect, but I reckon it's pretty damn fun and a great pilot. Well, I, I wrote my, um, my rating yesterday because I've got a... Like I said, I got a sheet okay. open with some points written down and stuff like that. Um, on there, I put the rating as 8.5 yesterday as well. So, hey, it's not one thing I like. Yeah, I, I agree. I reckon it's. I reckon it's not. It's not really a nine, but I reckon it's pretty yeah. close. Yeah, usually it is good fun. Uh, you know, I'm thinking back on it now, and I, I don't know if it is quite an 8.5, but I'm going to give it to it just because of how much it sets up the show and it's uh, like I. Uh, the reason that I, I'm kind of apprehensive is because I know there is so many good episodes to come, oh, and God. I'm like, if I'm giving this an eight point five, what yes. am I going to give these yeah, like wrong. these huge episodes? Because I'm not. Don't I'm not worry, a big the next ten two person, I'm going to do know? great. Like, oh really? Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get to those. I'll, I'll, I'll watch them. Well, no, I'm, I'm mixed. I've got I've got thoughts, but we'll we'll save those for the coming weeks. Um, There's so much to come. Oh, I'm so interested. So like, much, there's like, another wow. hundred and fifty episodes or so to go. Um, I yeah, say, sorry, well, I didn't count, but I reckon there's something close to that. Yeah, no, there will be. I'm pretty sure there is. Probably I something think like that, yeah, David, Matt, least. and Pete have all all did about 40 episodes or so. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's ridiculous. I was looking on here, and um, Nick Briggs is the nesting consciousness voice. Uh, our is our really? voice boy. Yeah. No way. Crazy. I know it's. I know it's. I don't know if you did this. This is a really nerdy thing that I just picked up on, but the. The same noise it makes is the same noise that the creature in Children of Earth makes. Again, it's just a real. Uh, I think thing I, I noticed that back in the day, actually. I, I, yes, I think yeah, now you say that, it rings like, a bell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's the classic BBC using the same. It is. Sounds it's crazy. You know, especially with the same spin off shows. But I did notice that, but it didn't take me out of the show. But that's interesting, Nikki. Yeah, Nick Bruce, he's always there. 
I didn't realize how involved with Big Finish he was until recently. Yeah, no, like, did you not know he that? runs yeah, the he's podcast really on it. there. Yeah, he um, he loves it. Yeah, you know, he writes and directs a lot of them. Obviously, he's in all the Dalek stories. Yeah, he's yeah, he does heaps. Cat. He's still keeping busy, yeah. you know. You gotta respect that. Yeah, did you watch on the Doctor Who YouTube channel? They put up a like a little vlog that was making Doctor Who Big Finish in lockdown. It was actually. I you was, know I don't watch Big Fi- listen to Big Finish. <laughs> I know, but it was like it was like a fifteen minute like just vlog. No, I didn't. Is that the one with um Pete Davidson and he's on like uh? No, he, he's not in it, but that's that's a fun photo. Yeah. Um, that's what I saw. But, Interesting. Yeah, that, I always it always makes me laugh how they use kind of similar mics to us, but they sound always really good. Yeah. So I'm clearly doing something wrong with my life because they don't sound that good. <laughs> that's why I always get out of it because I'm like, hey, that's that's the mic I use, but yeah, it doesn't sound that like they use Yetis all the time. Yeah, a few of them. I know the the one of the one of the blokes does, and I'm like, why does it sound that good? But no, I didn't. I didn't watch. I don't. I don't really. Well, did you actually? Sorry, I'm blabbering on here. But did you hear that? Um, uh, Eckerson said if we go back to Eccleston because the whole big finish thing he did say apparently in the past that if there was a really good idea he'd most probably come back to big finish oh really when, when was that uh this might be a load of crap because I saw it on Instagram hmm. it might just be crap because I didn't really hear anything about this before but apparently he said at a con he went to last year wow at like a Q&A someone asked him if he'd ever do big finish and he said look if the story was right I'd probably do it because he definitely warmed he's warmed up to do stuff because he did cons last year for the first time um and obviously his biggest role is a doctor so people go to see him for doctor who obviously i reckon I, you know what? I really do reckon he's in time of victorious i reckon he is yeah it could be could be yeah i reckon i reckon he is because he hasn't been on any other photos of any other big finish stories has he so yeah you know, mcgann has and so is david but not not eccleson i reckon mm. he's in it i reckon he is yeah, well, saying. now that we're back on the Eccleston drama a bit, uh, that interview yeah. I was Oh, talking good, about, okay, so, yeah, yeah. I'll yeah, we came full circle, isn't that great? Like yeah, a look professional at us. podcast. Uh, that is all awesome downhill from here. But, um, <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> um, so Eccleston, Just like every pilot. He, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, mm-hmm. In the interview, so for starters, the guy that was interviewing, interviewing him seemed like such a dick. Like, really? Yeah, like he was nice and polite, but some of the questions were like, He's kind of like an asshole. Like, he was okay. saying to Eccleston, he was like, oh, you know, obviously, you know, Doctor Who died such a horrible death in the 80s and, you know, it was going downhill for so long for years and it was, you know, it was real bad. How are we going to mm. be sure it's not that bad again or, or something like that? And I was like, what are you, why would you approach it like Jeez. that? That would just, I don't know, that sounded really dicky to me. Um, and yes, Eccleston answered that and he was saying like, you know, the sets are better, there's higher production value, there's a better budget. Um, he said the reason he didn't really watch it as a kid was because of the wobbly sets and he didn't see it was believable when there were shows like Star Trek that had a bit more budget and looked a bit more believable. Um, Good point. And he was also, the interviewer goes, um, so, you know, how many seasons do you think you're going to do? Because obviously... It takes a good few seasons to make the the fans happy, you know. Like if you only did one season and left, then uh, I don't Ooh. think the the fans would be too happy about that. And you can see Chris like so stumped, and he's like, "Oh, um, well, you know, we, our episodes are, are forty minutes long, and we've done thirteen of them. So I've basically done two seasons. So you know, uh, I've done two seasons there, but I can't say any more than that. But uh, we can. I've done two seasons, and I was it's like, interesting. man, interesting. Yeah, yeah. That's, so that's the thing, because like. He had already filmed his regeneration. So does that mean that like, so obviously before they even started filming, they'd written part of the ways. Like, so do you reckon he would have gone into the season recording knowing I don't, that he will regenerate? I don't think they. No, no, no. They, they, they didn't know. No one okay. knew. I don't think. Um, okay. So sorry, I'll, I'll jump onto that again quickly. Oh yeah. But the, the last yeah, thing yeah, I yeah. was going to say about the interview that kind of does oh, tie yeah, into it all is RTD. Uh, sorry, they were, he was like, what What got you into the show? What, why did you want to do the show? And Chris goes, because it was written by RTD. And numerous times in the interview, he like he's like, it's, Russell has made some great scripts. They're, they're all so mm. good. Um, and I just found it interesting that he, he's like hyped it up and he he's like hyping up Russell and his scripts. But he, you know, there's other reports coming out that he wasn't happy with the direction the show was going and stuff. So I don't know. But anyways, 
Um, right. Back to where we were talking about how, like, did they know um, he was regenerating? Yeah, I don't think they did. I, I definitely think they would have tried to keep him on for a few seasons, being the first Doctor to bring it back. And um, I was watching another behind-the-scenes sort of a vlog that Russell and Julie Gardner, are the other XX, or she might yes, be a main yeah. producer, I'm not sure. Yeah, pretty um, sure she's the main producer, yeah. Yeah, she, they, them two made like a vlog of like the first read-through and the first shooting days. And Russell was saying when they were doing the first read-through, he'd only written Rose, um, the Slytherine, um, World War Three, and Aliens of London, and another one, I think. I, I think it was like I think it was like the long game or something he'd written. Long game, yeah, I was gonna say that. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know why, but for some reason he hadn't done the end of the world yet. I don't think. Um, but yeah, so he obviously they were doing the read through, which meant they were starting to shoot very soon, um, probably in the next few days or or something. I don't know. Um, and he hadn't written those those episodes. Oh, maybe he had, I don't know. It's very mixed. It can be really complicated that kind of thing. But right. It definitely didn't sound like they knew he was leaving from the start. He was going. And I, I think they got maybe like halfway through the season and Chris was sort of, you know, hearing where yeah. it was going and was like, I'm not really all about that, which is so interesting because it is so good. Like everyone really likes the end. So I, I'm so curious as to what he didn't like about it. Yeah. If that's true. 100%. 100%. No, I only say, I don't know. I mean, fair enough, but like, you know, I think it went in a great direction, and I guess again I would have loved to have seen him do more. It's really that's why I, I don't like Big Finish, but I really hope he does something. I reckon I'd really dig those if uh, like, he does some, because mm. I just wish he did more. Yeah, I, like, I'm really happy he, he has one season because I, I think it makes it so it makes it real special and it's really unique mm. in that mm. way. Oh god, yeah. Um, oh god, yeah. But yeah, I definitely get around some big finish or something if he, he was to do some. I reckon he's in it. Yeah. I well, they it. announced a few already and he's, there's no, there's no Eck yet on the, no, on the big finish. No. Ones. It's, I think McGann is doing most of the, the big finish. And that's been announced so? so far. Yeah. Either way, I'll still be interested to see what it is and I'd love to see what David's doing in it. If he is involved with like audio, I think that'd be very interesting. Oh, yeah, but, by the way, whilst we're talking about David, um, oh, well, yeah. obviously, I think when we're getting closer to New Who coming out, we can have mm. a bit more, maybe like a news segment and stuff in the show where we can talk about new stuff that's yes. come out and, yes. and things. Um, Even talk about some spin-offs, maybe? Yeah, maybe. yeah, for sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I guess if we were to tackle the news segment today, the only thing I could really say is, okay. um, you know, I, I was going through my podcast. I, I listened to a Doctor Who podcast myself. Um, and I think I was listening to that. What's that and called? It's called the Big Blue Box Podcast. It's um, oh yeah, you watch that when you listen to that when we're on the old yeah fifty percent dot two podcast. I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Anyways, so whilst I was scrolling down my podcast, I saw a little podcast, a little minute long, less than a minute long podcast popped up, and it was from the big mm. man David Tennant. You know, he did his podcast for for a while. Yeah, he did for a while. Um, yeah. Is he back? Well, it's so it's cryptic, hey. um, because it's it's basically he did his first like run of episodes. I can't remember how many it was, but he said he'd done more because he said he'd done one with Georgia, um, which right. we never heard. Yeah. Right. Um, and then I think he did like his final episode of the season um, was like a bunch of outtakes from all of the all of the podcasts that had happened, um, right. and he was like, yeah, so that was season one. And then it'd been over a year, I think, since the show had finished now. Yes. Um, and then, yeah, while, yeah, today a little minute long audio clip came up and it was the sound of like a tape recorder or something. And then it stops and then he just goes, oh, hello. And then it, and then that's it. That's all the clip is. <laughs> so I, I take it that means season two is coming, you know, <laughs> coming which back. I'm looking forward to. I was going to say, he's whilst he's in lockdown, in isolation. yeah, well, whilst mm. he's in lockdown, surely mm. he'd be chipping away at that i think that'd be a fun little hobby for well, you can still do what we're doing now yeah exactly. and just talk and not be in the same room yeah as long as they got a good mic they were like, they were you know. he was really good on on the shows and he had some great guests on it i think the ones that stood out to me obviously jody being a who fan that was great and yeah, seeing that jody chemistry was, was on wasn't she? she was yeah. on one olivia coleman was really great and ian mckellen was great 
There was a few people that I didn't really know that were on there. Like I knew who they were, but wasn't really that interested mm-hmm. in them. Um, oh, he had mm-hmm. Catherine Tate as well. He yes, has, yeah, yeah. Um, I think he had Jessica Jones on there. Um, and then Kristen one, Ritter. yeah, yeah, Kristen Ritter. And then I didn't know that shit. One that I liked that I didn't really know the guy, but was still so interesting was John Hamm, who I know now. Um, yes, but yeah. when I listened to, it, I didn't really know who he was. But I still just because David and John was actually really good on it. Um, yeah, he had some pretty cool guests that were like pretty big. Yeah, David's got a great voice to listen to, so it's he does. Yeah, you should listen to him on um, a couple of podcasts as well. Like, I've listened to him be interviewed on podcasts, and he yeah. is very like very fun to listen to. Like, he is I? I'd be down for that. Like, honestly, he should do a series too. Yeah, he just he should. Yeah. You got nothing else to do in isolation. <laughs> like, do what we're doing. It's not exactly. that hard. So, Get um, around it. We'll, uh, we can sort of, I guess, do we wrap up our first episode here? We've hit like the 45 minute or so mark. Yeah, you know, I literally looked down and it was like 20 minutes. I was like, oh shit, like, is this the end? And now look at us, we're at 50 minutes. Yeah, we'll get there. Look at like, us go. Well, I was aiming for like 40 minutes or so, so we've gone over, you know. Um, good. Which is, you know, that's good. There, there's no limit. We're just here for a good time. So I, I just wanted to sort you better of better watch it. Better watch it. Every other Doctor Who podcast out there, we're coming for you. I, <laughs> I okay. I, I just want to say, whilst we're wrapping mm-hmm. up here, sort of maybe where the future will go with this, because mm-hmm. I, I don't know, Connor. Like I, I've just kind of hit you up and be like, let's do it. And he watched the episode, and um, well, I haven't yeah, really this, discussed this what... the the vision of where this is going to no, go. I guess not. Um, to be honest with you though, this is literally what I wanted to do, and that was my issues with it before was that like it needed its own channel, and I just feel like um, it would have been nice to go back and do some old stuff, and I feel like that's what excited me when you said to me, "Let's do it," because I was yeah. like, "I do want to rewatch it. It's really fun. That I don't get to see you a lot. It's nice to yeah, for talk sure. to you. It's great. You know, it's nice to do something creative, and like you know, it's good to, again just being creative. I think it's a great idea, but as to where it's going to go, I mean, like I said before, we could do. Even we could take like maybe even like a season break and then tackle maybe a season of like Torchwood or yeah, a series was, of Sarah I was Jane. Like that. Or, yeah, because we don't like have a, enough episodes of do two a week, you know. That yeah. So <laughs> here's sort of my my thought process of where things can go. Um, yeah, currently, go me and Connor are a bit busy, up. and there's a few things coming up. So we are sticking with one episode a week. I'm thinking every Monday for now they'll, they'll be dropping. Um, mm-hmm. But in the future, we could possibly have one dropping on Mondays and one on Thursdays or something like that. Um, yeah. twice a week maybe that'll go we'll see how successful they are as well you know I'm sure if oh they're gonna blow up if something happened and it went crazy big or whatever I, I'd oh my god we're famous wow. this is our jobs I, I, I'd, I'd make us I'd make time for two reviews a week you know um, I would too but yeah, yeah I, I'm hoping to bring some good some good humour in this some good chats yeah. um, and call me crazy but oh, I, and this is you no. know if we develop some fans and we can get um, a bit of a mm. ball rolling with this, then maybe we can get ourselves out, out there enough to sort of maybe have some some guests, some people that are out there in the in That's the Who fandom. Maybe like have a chat. So we do an episode yeah. where maybe Crispy Pro watches. Um, an episode, and then you better, he comes we used to shout him out on our podcast. Yeah, that's right. Ask him yeah, to come on to. all the time. But him, like <laughs> Ace Creeper, Josh Snares, any of those big YouTubers, YouTubers. Yeah. Um, once the we got the ball rolling a bit, the Who addicts maybe they could become keen to come on who knows this is obviously the first episode probably not going to get nice. crazy views but that's sort of what i'm thinking and i'm thinking you know who says we can't get like a crew member on or, or something like that obviously i'm not expecting us to get like david or, <laughs> or someone but you know someone that maybe isn't as like busy like they were like a, a cameraman or like a dop or yeah. or something that you know maybe we could make it work it would just be really fun like that sounds honestly. I'm 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 really excited. I I really am. I think this is such a cool thing we're doing. And like again, we could even like uh, we could even do like um, if we get to a spot where we could do like one episode of Doctor Who, or we could do like maybe one episode of Torchwood, and then oh like, yeah, and shake it up, yeah. Even like shake it up, like you know, we could we got all of Torchwood to watch. I haven't seen all of Sarah Jane. I've seen all of Torchwood. Yeah, so I've not cool seen all of Sarah Jane either. That'd be really nice to watch. Yeah, I think um, I've seen um, most and of we've it. seen all of Torchwood, obviously, but. Yeah. Uh, oh, we, got, we can watch Class again. <laughs> we can watch Class. That'll be a classic. Because we love Class so uh, much. Everyone classic. loves Class. <laughs> That'll be so funny to review. But we've got um, ages. And then, yeah, you're right. We can do news. And we're never going to run out of stuff to talk about because they're going to do 
They'll yeah, be doing more these seasons. seasons all the time. Like, yeah, it's going to be going for a while. So well, we can review the new episode. Yeah, yeah. Next well, year. when they come out, we'll we'll be on there weekly. I'd say is sort of a good good idea to do. That'd be great. I'm so excited, honestly. It's gonna be so fun. Yeah. So I really am excited. Yeah, get excited because I'm hoping you know we stick to it. It's and so th- should you. The the good thing about viewer. this, yeah, viewer, get hyped. Good thing about who is because it's like a, a topic. Um, it's a bit easier to sort of I think get people watching than your other podcast, where which can be a little like, you know, you yes. your podcast is you talk about a lot of different things on your yeah. other show, but it's a great podcast and you, you should definitely go listen. Aiden's to it. been on it. Um, yeah, I have. I've been a guest on it before. Friend um, of the show. But because this one is a bit more topical with it being about who, um, you know, maybe there is a chance for us to get the ball rolling and get... Uh, it is get easier, some, yeah, when you've got to talk about something that everyone loves, you know. I really yeah. am excited. I'm honestly, I might even watch any of the world tonight because I'm that yeah, excited. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> well, I need we? to get around it, you know. That's good, I'm, yeah. I'm really gassed. I'm really gassed. Good, you should be I gassed. really fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, cool. That's us. I, um, yeah, Con, I hope you have a good week. I hope man, yeah you too cool. man have a good weekend yeah and i hope not, uh, not too many beers aiden oh, I, I just, I just bought re- a card of an ass on the weekend oh dude you listened to me last night <laughs> oh yeah and last night <laughs> on a Wednesday hey you're night. drinking more than me these days oh don't get no, me started no, to the viewer close. i hope you have a good time i hope you're you're staying Thank safe you in covid um obviously our, our thoughts go out to everyone that is affected by not just the the nhs stuff but um also you know the civil right stuff that's going on Mm -hmm. everything's do with black lives matters that's such a huge thing right now so um you know i hope everyone's keeping well and this has been a fun distraction for uh 50 minutes or so of your time and i hope you you enjoyed it and i hope you come back next week so every every monday we got a new episode be there we will yeah lots wash your hands and uh yeah keep doing your thing stay safe Brilliant. We'll see you for end of the world. Love it. We're yeah. pretty much in the end of the world, so yeah, <laughs> we, might, we might as well review it next week. <laughs> Here's a point I should have said at the start of the podcast: um, you were meant to watch Rose before you listen to this podcast. So, um, if if you haven't, me or the viewer, the viewer. Oh, okay. It, the, the plan is that they can watch it along with us. But um, that's cool. Yeah, I like that. If you haven't, uh, you know, watch it and then watch End of the World for next Monday. And by next Monday, we'll. Uh, We'll all be caught up together and we'll be having a good crack in time. Alrighty. We're living the end of the world and we're going to watch the end of the world. That's damn right. Let's get it. Let's get Thank it. Thank you for having me on, Aiden. Thank you for being here. It's been great. It's been great. Thank you very no much, worries, everybody. Bye bye. We'll Bye-bye. see you next Monday. See you next Monday. <laughs>